Alright, uh, I wanted to do a shorter little video this week, uh, just to sort of talk about some stuff I've been doing, mostly with Epoxy Sculpt. What I wanted to do was make a little Among Us crewmate, uh, but in order to make it a little bit more difficult on myself, I decided that I wanted the eye to be adjustable, so it could kind of look side to side, up and down. Uh, the problem I sort of ran into, though, was that the peg and slot system that I had originally... Ooh, a little hard to see. But, yeah. The peg and slot system that I had originally sort of envisioned, uh, while it works, setting the eye, like, locking it in one of the major directions, although the top doesn't quite fit, I might have to... kind of sits crooked not quite having the effect I want. It's more like it's trying to sort of pivot and wiggle around in that slot and it doesn't sit in there too firmly. Uh, when I do get around to um, making a mold for this and uh, casting all the stuff in resin, which was the idea and which is why I wanted to have these in separate pieces. Um, the eye, so I could cast that in like a 325 with a little bit of pigment in it. Um, and then the body and backpack as uh, separate pieces just because I was thinking backpack would be kind of a, a place where a lot of air bubbles would get caught on since it's sort of a square shape so it's already a problem but I was also thinking it would be cool if I could stash a little button battery in there and then run an LED through to the eye so you could have that uh, little glowing like imposter eye um, but nonetheless I decided epoxy sculpt was going to be the material I wanted to use, and uh, for the most part, I'm really liking this material. I actually managed to learn a few little things with it. Now this is the the basic A and B compound. Um, if you watched any of uh, Craftsman's videos, he's done some stuff with this. It's a very cool material, and a lot of people use it for a lot of different crafty things because, uh, for one, it dries to a very tough finish that you can uh, sand almost to like a mirror finish if you really want to try. Very durable. I have dropped these pieces countless times and they've never chipped or cracked on me. And then you can always just mix in more and uh, slop it on and sort of blend it together which you can sort of see that's what I've been doing just to get the shape as perfect as possible. Now the downside to this is it's a little tricky to work with because it remains sort of tacky and sticky for a while uh, and then it takes up to 24 hours to fully cure to a rock hard durable finish. What I discovered by sort of searching around online is that if you bake it, it will cook faster or uh, rather it will cure faster. One video online I saw uh, suggested something at like like uh, 30 minutes at like 100 degrees in your oven and another, actually, uh, they had made like a sort of small cooking lamp where it used just like a normal light bulb and a tin can. But I found that if I just take this, and I take this crappy lamp that I've had for a while, I mean, it's not anything special, uh, just a little desk lamp, but for whatever reason, this lamp heats up like crazy. Uh, like, it gets hot to the point where if you grab this weird little metal handle they put right there next to the bulb, uh, you can burn yourself a little bit. And I was honestly thinking about tossing this lamp out a couple of weeks ago, and I just kind of threw it off to the side until I saw this little tip with the epoxy sculpt, where you literally just, you make your epoxy, you mix it as normal, all that, and then you just sit that on there, and, um... Well, I don't have it plugged in right now, but I was literally just putting that do this side with, like, just a few inches from the piece, and I would leave that for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and that would cure rock solid. I actually used that in uh, a few slopped together layers to build this thing here, which is not a mold, but rather... A little sanding jig so you can see it goes face down like that goes like that and that's something a little bit more substantial to hold on to while you you sand off the uh, the extra nubbins on the feet but 
in order to make that work, I had to kind of build it up and make one side at a time, then fit the other side together. Uh, unfortunately, I should still have him. Here we go. Unfortunately, epoxy sculpt, once it starts to cure, or once it adheres to something, it, it really gets on there. So what I ended up having to do was uh, take my little sacrificial gondola there and uh, slot them in petroleum jelly. Just a mold release, more or less. And it makes the finish a little weird. Like, it doesn't always play nice. But it allowed me to make these two pieces that fit together that are more or less made for each other. I mean, it's not perfect, it's not pretty, but it's a sanding jig. It doesn't really need to be. Uh, and that worked as something so... Um, well, it, it served the purpose of being another thing to sort of play with the material and see what it can do. So, working with the epoxy sculpt has been uh, has been interesting. I definitely like that it can be sanded and smoothed a lot more easily. Yeah. It can even get fairly thin. If you see here, you can pick out just a bit of the aluminum foil underneath sticking through, or rather sticking to the surface, but it's when it's thin enough, it's almost transparent. Very interesting. But, all right, so aside from those little tricks I've learned with the epoxy sculpt, the overall challenge here was, as I mentioned before, to make a little Among Us crewmate, and, you know, sort of learn the material a little bit, but also to uh, make it as something that's cast in multiple pieces to sort of increase the quality. But the issue I was running into is this little handmade slot and peg system, which this is actually second iteration of it, uh, doesn't quite work quite as nicely as I would like. Uh, it's way too loose in the middle to the point that the eye just falls out, unless it is um, affixed, or rather uh, completely wedged in one direction. If it's in the middle, it kind of does not... It doesn't even want to stay uh, aligned, so this doesn't really work for me. Initially, I was thinking I get rid of the up and down direction, just give this a single like little slot channel to slide, sort of pivot side to side on, and that would be a little bit sturdier than what I've got now, but it's still not quite what I I had in mind. Um, I don't even know if that'd be perfect. I think my concern right now is mostly just that. This little wooden dowel that I've wedged in there, glued in, and this little hand-carved uh, channel that I chiseled out, just going in there with the tool and just scraping out and wiggling around and filing away. I don't think that really holds up. So what I ended up doing is uh, posting about this on um, Twitter, Instagram, and then the Crafters of the Universe Facebook group. If you don't know who the Crafters of the Universe are, it's a little it's community gathering uh, collective of um, crafters from all around the world of all different skills and skill levels uh, gathered by the craftsman himself. Uh, and they share their stuff and talk about what they're working on and uh, do a little bit of self-promotion and helping each other out. And I was talking with uh, a few of them the other night on... Um, what I could do instead, if there was, say, a different sort of design or a different mechanism I could use to attach this. And initially, like, I, I wasn't too sure what some of the ideas, like, uh, some just said, like, well, could you just do magnets? Uh, and I was like, well, if I just do a magnet, it'll just want to fix to that one uh, spot. I believe, yeah, I believe it was uh, Nathan on the uh, crafters group mentioned the idea of having a set of um, multiple magnets arranged in sort of a similar cross pattern and then having you know magnet on the other side that would naturally sort of click to one of the five positions only problem with that is to get all five magnets in you kind of need one flipped around so it would be like four identical polarities and one reverse polarity and uh, that doesn't quite work but the idea of using like a um, a bit of metal instead of another magnet on the inside of the eye bubble visor thing kind of clicked and after thinking about it for a little while I figure if I pop uh, or rather break that out drill that out replace that with a BB 
and then I've actually got some little tiny rare earth magnets but these ones may actually be a bit too big but I think I'm gonna at least for this video attempt to uh, drill that out a bit more pop that out and do a little rough test fit and see how well with a little BB as the metal contact there like how well that even wants to hold together and uh, if that idea will even work all right I'm just gonna a little voiceover recording from the future here uh, as I discovered in my previous video the audio levels got a little wonky the longer went on and after digging around on the internet I discovered that there is a weird setting issue where the microphone can slowly taper off in volume until it's barely recording anything and that's kind of what happened here so all you're really missing uh, from me explaining is that I am using a power drill to drill things out and uh, get it fitted for the magnet uh, nothing too crazy there it's mostly just about having a flush fit and then using some masking tape to do a little test fit and uh, much to my surprise it did actually work out very nicely I was initially worried that the magnet would only want to pull to a center point but uh, even with the BB just taped in there it is slightly adjustable and that's exactly what I was going for and it was reason enough for me to go and order some 10 millimeter magnets which won't be here for several days in the meantime all I can really do is wait because uh, until I have those I can't really finish doing things and I can't move ahead with um, sizing everything up and making molds and so on uh, so hopefully this was remotely interesting uh, if you were interested in epoxy sculpt maybe this will inspire you to try it out um, if you're already using epoxy sculpt maybe these extra tricks with the uh, the lamps for cooking or using the um, petroleum as mold release when fitting two epoxy sculpt parts together will come in handy hmm. but seeing as I am running out of footage here I will just leave this with one more thing. A quick thank you to the Crafters of the Universe group, specifically Adam, Nathan, and Carolyn, who are the people who took some time to talk with me and pitch some ideas and helped me reach this much better idea than what I had. So I suppose the big takeaway from all this then is take the time to try out new materials. You might like them. Um, if you're unsure, look around online. There might be tricks and uh, helpful tips that you people have already come across and if you're ever struggling and just completely at a loss for what to do like I was uh, talk to other people sometimes just articulating your problem and bouncing around ideas can very rapidly help you out um, so if you enjoyed it let me know um, but I will maybe have another video at some point soon so till then I guess